We know during these unprecedented times, uh, looking at our health and wellness is very important. So that's why we're talking to Trudy German today. She's a personal trainer, a health and wellness expert, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about what we could do to keep our stress levels down and to make sure that we're uh, maintaining a healthy lifestyle during this health crisis. Trudy, thanks for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. I really do appreciate it. So first and foremost, how are you and your family doing? We are good. I'm doing very good. Been drinking lots of water, definitely practicing social distancing and just making sure I'm staying healthy. You know, I when I'm reading comments from uh, friends and colleagues or even talking to them on the phone, you know, we're seeing a lot of people obviously um, working out on uh, online or sharing, you know, working out. And some people have a lot of equipment. They might even have a, a Peloton. But what about those people who don't have a lot of equipment at home that they were relying on uh, the equipment at the gyms? What can they do to uh, stay uh, fit? As I always like to tell people, if you have a body, you have enough stuff to get um, a good workout in. And also at home, if you have enough place to stand, then you can definitely get a good workout in. You know, those stuff at the gym, those are all nice and those are additives, but you can definitely get a good workout using your own body weight, learning to manage your own body weight in a small space. And that is something I work with with my clients. And I, I also do it sometimes at home in my office. You know, community is so important uh, at this time, but obviously we can't meet with people. We can't be in group, uh, you know, health classes. People are doing things virtually. What are some of the things you're hearing from your clients and, and their, your fitness community on how they're dealing with uh, this health crisis? You know, as you said, a lot of people are now offering classes online. That's definitely one of the ways we've been doing, and I've been doing that for a while. And I still have check-in with my clients, you know, Zoom calls, Zoom meetings. Um, we still connect on in our Facebook group. And also, you know, let me kind of sideways. A lot of people are just focusing on the exercise aspect right about now, but there's so many other aspects into managing your health and being fit in these times. Another thing is, are you sleeping enough? Because a lot of people are home, but they may not be sleeping enough because they are stressed. You know, financial hardship may be on them. They may be laid off. One person may be laid off or they may be looking to be laid off. So along with stress, a lot of people aren't sleeping properly, which will definitely affect your health right about now, right? Working out is a great way to relieve stress. And also when we work out, we're flushing the toxic out of our lungs and, you know, which also includes bad bacteria. So there are so many aspects to being fit and healthy right about now that includes exercise and other aspects. You know, another thing you and I talked about when we had a call uh, a few days ago, um, moving out of advice for the, the personal, the person at home, you know, inside their home. What about um, employers? Uh, you know, what are some of the things you want to share with them in terms of making sure uh, their employees who are working from home are looking after their mental health, uh, taking some breaks, drinking water, eating healthy and, and trying to find a balance of working out, but also working from home? I don't think a lot of employees have actually thought about that, to be honest. I think they more have thought about along the lines of um, their staff is working remotely. Let's make sure they have uh, they can access the system to work. So what I've been doing is I have been working with a few organizations in offering virtual workshops to teach their employees how to be fit and healthy while working remotely because what's the point of having them working remotely if they're not healthy because then if they're unhealthy they can't do the job right so some of the things we've been doing is workshops offering things they can do at home how they can manage their stress level foods they can and should be eating that will definitely boost their immune system you know foods high in vitamin c not just oranges <laughs> as i know when most people hear vitamin c they also they usually go towards oranges. There are other foods like kiwi, se um, sesame seeds, almond, salmon, chicken. Those are other foods that you can also help that will boost your immune system. And when your employees are healthy, then they're more, they can get more done, right? Increase productivity. And of course, the company, everyone's happy. But to be honest, I think a lot of employers need to be doing more 
in terms of their employees health and fitness not just okay well we're no longer in the office you're working remotely we're practicing social distancing that's good but there's so many other aspects to it you know just to rewind you obviously have so much knowledge in the fitness and, and the health and wellness space where did it all come from what was your journey like getting to where you are now uh you own body envy so tell me a little bit about your journey and a little bit about uh, starting your company Okay, so I'm a certified personal trainer now, and I know a lot of people who are into fitness, they, you, they were usually athletes when they were younger, and you know they transitioned into becoming a personal trainer because of their love for fitness. Not this girl. This girl was not into fit, not into sports. I still don't play or watch, participate anyway in sports, and even learning about to ride a bike, a two-wheel bike, you don't even want to know how old I was when I actually <laughs> did do that. But I started working out because, as I like to call it now, I just, for vanity, I just wanted arms like Angela Bassett. <laughs> and and you, you definitely got them. <laughs> that comes out automatically. And then I did the corporate thing and I wasn't happy there. And then um, I decided to become a certified personal trainer and over the years, I've transitioned more into not just a personal trainer, but into also health and wellness. Because when I just started, I only cared about working out and teaching people how to work out, to be honest with you. You know, I was at that vanity stage, but now I teach clients and organizations much more than that. Working out is the easiest part. People think working out is the hardest part, but it's the easiest part. It's what are you doing those other times? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you doing things that make you happy? Are you drinking enough water? Are you eating enough water? Because you can have, you can eat your water also. Are you sleeping enough? What are your relationships like? How are you managing stress? Because those are all components of being healthy, right? And if you're unhealthy in any aspects of those, it's going to transition into your fitness level. For example, stress. One thing with stress is a lot of women experience this. You know, they're constantly bloated or feel they have a gut, but it's not really have a gut. It's just some of us, when we're stressed, we're just bloated. Sorry, I just realized I completely diverted. No, that's okay. You can talk about that. Because I wanted to ask you a question about the eating the water thing. Like, I never heard that before. What is that about? And what, how does that work? I know whenever I say that, people are like, wait, what? You can eat your water? But water is good for us, as we all know. But the truth is most of us don't want to be drinking water. Even I myself, I like water. But at some point, I'm like, I don't want to drink any more water. So that's where I'll eat my water. Certain fruits and vegetables like cucumbers are high in water, like 90% water. So you can eat your water with cucumbers. You can also eat your water from um, sweet peppers, red peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers. Those are some of the ways that you can eat your water without, you know, feeling like, oh my gosh, more water. <laughs> I'm glad you, you explained that because I have been eating my water. I do love red peppers. I like watermelon. I, I do eat cucumbers. So I'm glad you explained that because I was like, am I doing something wrong? How, how you know, or how can I eat my water? So thank you for clarifying that. And talk to you me. Mentioned, Go ahead. You mentioned watermelon, watermelon, honeydew, melon, cantaloupe, anything in the melon family is also high in water. And because, you know, they are kind of sweet, they are sweet. You don't feel boring having water. So you had a, a career transition working in insurance, now uh, into uh, health and wellness and fitness. When did you start Body Envy and you know what prompted you to launch the company? So Body Envy was started because I was unhappy um, in my job. I transitioned from, I went from one company to another company and I was still unhappy there. And a friend of mine, she suggested it. And I kind of looked into it and I started it there, but it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to start my own company. It was, I worked full time at one insurance company and then I would go to a gym part time and train clients there. And then I wanted to work full time as a personal trainer and I wanted to, I didn't want to transition my part time career into a full time one at the gym I was working at. And I was applying to all these gyms, all these gyms, and no one would call me back 
And a friend of mine was like, how about you start your own company? You know, your clients are always complaining. They don't want to go to a gym. They just want to work out at home. And how about you do that? And it was like, okay, <laughs> kind of thing. And then I registered Body Envy and, you know, started with clients, going to clients, making it convenient for them to work out at home because a lot of women do want, and I, and I worked primarily with women, and a lot of women do want to work out, but they're intimidated by the gym. They think that, especially with social media now, they think they have to have on these cute outfits when they go into the gym. That's, you know, nails fully done, eyelashes done, hair <laughs> done. <laughs> when I see these girls, I'm like, girl, like, how are you working out like that? Yeah, my eyelash would fall into my eye, you know, while I'm working out. It, would be a, it wouldn't be a pretty, a pretty picture. And they were intimidated about going to the gym because they were either not comfortable in their own skin, their own body. They were also intimidated because everyone there seemed as if they knew what they were doing except them. And also a lot of my clients had children, younger children, and childcare responsibility was there. So it was like, I found getting them into the gym was a bit harder. So um, I was like, okay, how about I remove that barrier? How about I bring the gym, quote unquote, to you? How about I come to you? And they really appreciated that. And then over the years, that transitioned to me also being online and then also offering workshops to corporations because that was another aspect I found missing based on my previous experience in the corporate world and conversations with my clients. You're spending eight, 10 hours a day at work corporations are providing, you know, subsidy for them to attend the gym, but they're working these long hours where by the time they finish, they just want to go home. So it was like, okay, how about I come in and I offer workshops on things you can do, at, you know, and I would offer workshops like lunch and learns about that. And also give tips on, hey, it's three o'clock and you're feeling that crash you want to go get another coffee, but then you're up all night and you get to work the next day, you're tired. So instead of this coffee, how about you have some water? How about you go for a walk? And it was like, it transitioned into, okay, this is how you can be healthy at work without the quick fixes, because mm -hmm. the quick fixes are not sustainable and they're not healthy, right? So I want to shift the conversation a little bit to representation. You know, you talked about going into these companies and working with different companies and working with different clients. You know, obviously we live in Toronto and we like to say we're diverse, but sometimes, you know, when it comes to women in sports, uh, you know, we don't always see that. We go to conferences and they don't look diverse. We might, um, you know, go on a, a typical website to look for, you know, uh, running services and we don't see people that look diverse. So, you know, how important is representation to you and how are you um, inspiring other uh, young girls who maybe want to, um, you know, do what you're doing? You know, you're certified and you also own your own business. So um, what, what do you... How do you feel about that? Representation is very important. And, you know, I remember when I started Body Envy, I had no idea what I was doing because at the time, social media wasn't what it is today. And I didn't see anyone around me or anyone who looked like me owning businesses. And I remember when I would seek out help, it was always, you know, books written by older white men who had like a support system or family or friends that could cut them a check to start the business. I didn't have that. And it was very hard. I'm not even going to lie. And even now when I go, um, I'm part of panels or when I go into organizations, sometimes um, the only black person on the panel, but then I see so many black or women of color in the audience. And I remember in 2019, when I was part of a panel at Harvard University, I remember afterwards, and I spoke about my experience and having Jamaican parents and deciding to become an entrepreneur, how that didn't go over well. I remember at the end of the panel, I had so many women of color came up to me and was like, thank you. Like, this is my story. This is what I'm dealing with, with my parents. And, you know, you doing this is showing me that I can accomplish it. Representation is very, very important because when you see someone like you doing something positive, it gives you hope to be like, oh, okay, I can do this. She did it. Okay. So if my mom doesn't approve of this, I have someone who did it, who's done the blueprint to be like, okay, here you go. 
And also a lot of women of color, you know, younger didn't participate in sports because one, we probably didn't have the resources. Parents didn't have the funds to pay for the gears to send, the, send us on the trip. And once again, we didn't see anyone who really looked like us doing it. We wanted to go out because that's what we saw people doing, right? Or if we were doing, um, participating in sports, for example, for myself, sometimes people are like, oh, you're too muscular for a girl. I want to work out, but I don't look like you. Like that doesn't bother me because it's like, I like how I look. So I'm good. Yes. <laughs> Self body confidence. <laughs> oh, yes. When people say that, it's like you don't gotta like it, but I got it. I like it, boo. So we good. Yes. Right. Representation, and it's not just representation of, um, you know, women of color. It's also women of a certain age. Because my age starts with a four. I won't say the exact age, <laughs> but when people are like, "Oh, you're still young. Wait until you're in your thirties." Uh, <laughs> you're very <laughs> wise, right? <laughs> right. It's, yes. It's, it's representation of age Dif you see yeah different age. generations in business women in their 30s women in their 40s it's representation of so many things because most of us grew up hearing especially for women you have to do this by the time you're married you should have a husband you should have a child and this like that and when we see women breaking those barriers do things it also gives you hope and take the pressure off you take the pressure off yourself with okay that person is doing it so i can do it also and it's possible right i love exactly what you said you know if we can see it we can be it we can be empowered encouraged by each other who okay. are in the sports industry and we believe it yeah exactly yeah. you you hit the nail on the head um is there anything else that's coming up with body envy that you want our community to know about i know you're always doing great things in your website you've got lots of um virtual uh training um sessions and, and and videos on how people can lose weight and stay stay healthy um, but is there anything else that you want to share uh, with our Shoes for Sports community? Sure. I'm going to drop the link where you can download um, for a quick, healthy, yummy smoothie. For those smoothies, you can have them for breakfast. You can have them later in the day. And you should aim to make your own smoothie. Don't buy the ones out at those stores because they're unhealthy. Um, you know, and... Uh, I also have a podcast that I'm going to be dropping soon. So I'll definitely, once we are connected, they'll learn more information about that. And yeah, just email me if you have any questions. You can find me at bodyenvy.ca. My email is trudy, T-R-U-D-I-E, at bodyenvy.ca. And I'm on Instagram, bodyenvy1. <laughs> they can't miss you. They can't miss you. Thank you so much, Trudy. <laughs> you have um, a lot of energy. You have a lot of knowledge for people who, you know, just want to stay fit and healthy. And it's not just um, being certified in your education. I think you've really brought a lot of practical information to people who are really um, under a lot of stress right now and just want to know, like, how can, what can I do with the limited resources I have or limited access to, to programs? What can I do to stay healthy and, and fit? You know, if our bodies aren't healthy, Healthy, then that's it right you know you, you only have your health exactly if we're I always say if you aren't healthy one you can't take care of your family and you can't make the money so you got to be healthy that is so true thank you for helping us to stay healthy it was great talking to you thanks for having me have a great one you too